Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS. Today I'm joined by Fernando from Amazon Fresh. Thanks for joining. Thanks for inviting me, Matt. So we've been doing a lot of these videos with customers and partners. It's been really cool seeing all their architectures. But you know, for people who've been watching the series, they'll know that once in a while we turn the camera internally and talk to groups within Amazon about how they're using AWS. So you guys are using AWS for a selection workflow portal. Did I get it right? That's right, yeah, selection workflow portal. It's an internal tool that we use at Amazon Fresh for um, managing the selection of products that we offer to our customers in the different cities that we operate. Okay, great. So Amazon Fresh is a grocery delivery service? That's right, yeah. Amazon Fresh is a grocery delivery service for Prime members. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I actually use it in Brooklyn to get no. groceries, so thank you. <laughs> uh, so selection workflow portal, what does that mean? It's just managing what inventory you have on hand at any time? Or? Yeah, so selection is something that is very important for our customers uh, in the grocery space. Um, customers are like to buy a specific kind of brands. Yeah. For example, people in New York might buy a certain uh, brand of milk, whereas people in San Diego might buy a, a different uh, brand of milk. So um, that's why we built this tool, because we want to get it right for the customers. We want to offer the products that they love. And uh, so we have a team of selection managers that use this tool on a daily basis to manage the selection that we offer uh, on every city. So we'll dig into this soon in a second. You know, at first glance, it looks like a serverless architecture. That's right. What were you doing before? Like, why did you build this? So selection managers were actually, uh, believe it or not, they were using Excel spreadsheets to yeah, manage the selection. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we didn't have a software before, but uh, we started building this, and we quickly. Uh, so improvements on productivity and uh, better results as, as of uh, the selection that we offer to our customers. Okay, great. So uh, let's walk through it. So I, I took a guess. It sort of looks like a serverless architecture. Uh, I guess step us through the, the architecture. Sure. So uh, let's start from the bottom up. So we have our um, UI, which is hosted on S3. We use CloudFront for, uh, uh, we fronted it with CloudFront. So that's like static web pages? Exactly, it's a React website. Cool, okay. Yeah, that's that's the UI that the selection managers or our users uh, see, right? And uh, we have a WAF that we use to white list IP addresses for only the sites that we want to allow uh, our users to access from. Nice. And then um, after that, we have, so the UI connects through our Lambda functions via API Gateway. We offer a, a, a set of, we expose a set of endpoints uh, via API Gateway, and we use Cognito for authentication. Great, so Cognito for sort of an auth layer, API Gateway to front, uh, a, a Lambda back sort of API. Exactly, okay. yeah. And uh, then on the data layer, we have RDS, we have, we used Aurora. Okay. And uh, we have a, a, a master instance with a read replica, and so, so with RDS, um, you know, a lot of people are grappling with what type of database to use. Uh, you're using Aurora. Why yeah. did you pick Aurora? Well, so we actually started uh, the project with DynamoDB, and uh, we quickly learned that our users, the way they access our, the data, it's more in an exploration mode. Okay. They don't really know how they want to see it. There's a bunch of data about recommendations so of products. It's hard to predict which indexes you need. Exactly. Yeah. It was hard with Dynamo. So we switched it to Aurora because it was a more natural fit. Okay. And uh, why Aurora? I think it's just if we had, if you have the freedom to choose any of the options from RDS, then probably Aurora is one of the ones that offer uh, a great feature set. Okay, so this is the data layer. Is that where the sort of selection is actually stored? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, all of the selection is stored there. So the Lambda functions will access uh, RDS, and uh, yeah, essentially all the functions will will store data in there, query it, and show it in the UI. Okay, and so at this layer, I also see SQS. You know, often I see people using SQS to sort of decouple their architecture. Is that what you're doing here? Yeah. Or? So we integrate with a bunch of other internal systems, retail systems, for actually sending purchase orders okay. and actually ordering the selection to be available for customers. So for that, we use SQS. So some of the Lambda functions will uh, get triggered on an event basis on a on so a event driven event driven yeah, yeah. and uh, they will uh, put to SQS. Uh, the selection for a specific city, and then uh, you know there's so a you bunch have of all other of Amazon or all of Amazon yeah. Fresh <laughs> over here. Okay, all of other retail systems that are listening on the queue. Okay, cool. So you have event-driven architecture using SQS to decouple from other systems. RDS Aurora for your data layer. Um, the front end sort of a React-based serverless. Uh, what's happening at the top here? What, what are you using CloudWatch and S3 for? Okay, so there was another requirement for, from our business. Uh, 
people that they wanted to do business intelligence on what kind of recommendations of products we are, uh, you know, managing in the system. So we can adjust as time evolves. Exactly. Yeah. So um, uh, we have a Lambda function here that is triggered by CloudWatch. So it is triggered on a nightly basis. Okay. And um, it basically what it does is just uses the uh, select into S3 functionality from Aurora, yeah. which is really, really cool, because you can issue a select statement, just a, a SQL statement, and then instead of returning the data back to the function, what we're Aurora will do, it will just output it uh, to S3. Nice. And what happens then is we have uh, the fresh BI systems uh, pick up the data on a regular basis and, and input it into the Redshift cluster okay, so for further Redshift analysis. Redshift for deeper analytics. And yeah, okay. that's right. Very cool, and that's actually nice how you kind of decouple the data in S3. You could use Redshift, yeah. but you could also use EMR or whatever you want right. for anything. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, you know, we talk about serverless with customers and partners. I just think it's really cool that internally we're using things like Aurora for RDS. We're decoupling using SQS. We're using S3 for data so we can talk to it with a Redshift and, of course, the serverless front end with all of these nice services. It's uh, cool to see us really dog food it and do the same things that our customers are doing. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, what serverless allowed us to do is to get something, get a product out the door really quickly and remove a lot of the operational overhead that we, you know, we have with uh, managing servers and really focus on improving the selection for our customers. That's great to hear. Thanks for sharing with us. It's a great architecture. Thank you. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture.